I put mayonnaise on my pillow last night, and uh, guess what happened? Just up the road in a pickup truck for men and back White robes across and gas well They got it all, they got it The boys want black Johnny Parker in a coffin Live up top of country hill where Black and white don't mix too well, oh no Wow! Who the fuck is this guy? Who is this guy? Fuck this guy Nah, no, just kidding Whoop! Scroop those new balls. You better scroop them. Scroop them or new! Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 166. Yeah. 166. Ladies and 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 gentle fish. Whoa. <laughs> 166, okay? Um, today we've got a f-ing guest on. We got another guest, okay? I'm getting guests, left, right, and center. You see? I enjoy doing solo podcasts, but I love having guests on. Because it, it gives me a moment to, like, relax. And have someone to, you know, have someone alongside me to chat with. And it's now becoming pretty acceptable to have people over over Zoom or Skype, so it's fantastic for me. <laughs> but this guy we have on today, he's an old friend of mine. If you if you if you're familiar with any of my old original content on this channel, it was all sketch comedy from when I was a child, a 14 year old boy, 12 year old boy. Okay, remember that video? Uh. Blanked by the Grim Reaper. You know the one, okay? This guy that we're about to indulge in, he was the one who filmed that, okay? My most viewed video on this channel, as it currently sits, is a hundred ways to die. Not a thousand ways to die, it's a hundred ways to die. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a parody of a thousand ways to die. This was an idea I came up with, with Rudy, back in the day, Okay? We did it. We uploaded it. Turned out that it it, it gained a lot of popularity. Sixty thousand views is what it's sitting at. And uh, yeah, many other many other videos. Okay, There's, like go go through my catalog of all the old shit. You're gonna see this guy a lot. And uh, so he's pursuing a career in the music industry, and we're not gonna touch on that at all. Okay, we talk about a lot of stuff, mostly guns, because <laughs> he likes guns. Okay. You might say, hey, that's a touchy subject. Well, who cares, okay? We're going to talk about it whether you like it or not. And if you don't like it, well, then shit, I don't know what to tell you. Don't watch me then, okay? It's that simple, all right? I don't have a lot of views on guns, but this fella does, okay? And I've known him him for a lot of years. Met him in grade 7, okay? So why don't we just jump right into it? Here's episode 166 of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. Rudy Pache. Pache, I mean. Everybody. Uh, ah, there he is! <laughs> going on, bud? Not much. Just got back from some drag racing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yep. How's that drag racing? It was alright, it's super... Are you racing or are you just watching? No, I'm just watching. I'm not racing. Are you crazy? I don't know what you've been up to. Fucking hitting <laughs> fucking fast cars and driving really fucking fast in the strip. No, that's that's not me. That's I don't do that shit. <laughs> um, so you're you're seeing me through my laptop camera, but I've got a separate camera recording for the podcast. Okay. And I'm looking at you on a big screen TV over here. So if I'm not oh, look- nice. if I'm not looking at the camera, that's because I'm looking at the screen. Got some gobs driving 
driving up the road, really annoying. What was that? It's fucking what people do in the... I don't know if they do it out there, but in the East Coast, a lot of fucking people drive these things. They call it gobs. It's just a bike, and they put a fucking, like, lawnmower motor <laughs> on the fucking thing. Gobs? <laughs> like, just... It's, they call them gobs. What does gobs... like, they just turn a bike, they just put the fucking en- engine on the chain, and they, it's just like a fucking motor motorized bicycle but you know it's like a fucking just a normal bike yeah there's there's those around here but they don't call them gobs though what does gob I mean know, i don't even know if everybody calls them that but i know in sydney they used to fucking call them that is it an acronym for something i don't fucking know oh. <laughs> i just did that to people were calling them and i was like yep yeah, they're fucking annoying as shit <laughs> but they're loud as fuck yeah and you know your your accent isn't actually as thick as i thought it was gonna be probably less than it used to be to be honest. And honestly, if I start drinking, then it's like fucking... It just comes right the fuck out. But I've been in Halifax for like fucking eight years now. Oh, yeah. Eight years. Yep. So, are you still in Electric Spoonful? Yes. Mine's and, broken here. And you got your your, your your own band going, I think, don't you? Yeah, I got my own shit, and I do my solo stuff, and I'm starting another one with my buddy, too. It's like going to be like fucking 60s pop shit. Oh, wow. So you're going to have three bands on the go. Yeah. What's what's the solo stuff? Like, what kind of genre is that? It's like folk music. Fucking just straight up sappy ass, you know, cheesy folk shit. Yeah. I like that alien thing in the back. What is that? Oh, this is my uh, friend's, uh, one of my roommate's mom's grew it for him. He's a drummer. (laughs) Oh, that's cool. My boy. British. He's British? He's not British. His mother's from fucking Britain. Look at this. We got a Mr. Poopy butthole stuff. Oh, wow. I love Rick and Morty. Yeah, I don't mind it. I haven't watched it in fucking forever. I haven't even seen, like, the latest season. Yeah, they take a while to, to put out seasons. Oh, yeah, it takes fucking forever. Man, the lighting is so shit in my apartment. Are we, like, doing the podcast right now, or is this, like, <laughs> fucking, like... Yeah, we're, we're into it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, like, actually on it. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Yeah, this is Rudy Pache, or Pache, everybody. Pache. You were still back when when everybody used to say that still, Pache. Yeah, I was going to call you Rudy Pace just to piss you off, but... (laughs) I got enough people that actually just think... I'll know people for fucking years, and they'll be like, still saying Pace, and I'm like, you know it's Pache, and they're like, I thought you were joking when you are saying that. (laughs) I'm like, no, (laughs) it's fucking... That's why I had to put the X, because you know there's no accent on it. Right. Normally, I put the accent on when I started playing music because I didn't want people to think it was just Rudy Pace. Right. That doesn't, have, that doesn't have as much of a fucking ring to it as Pache. Yeah. And as soon as they see that, that accent, they're going to know it's not pronounced Pace. Yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't, even with the accent, it doesn't look like it says Pache, but I just know, they know that it's not fucking Pace, at least. Yeah, for sure. What, why, why do you have, like, four different Skype accounts? They're all, <laughs> I know they're all one. yours. Dude, I literally just made this Skype. You said, what's your Skype username? And I went and made this. There's Well, there's three other ones with your face plastered on them, and they all remember, say... I don't, I don't remember the last time I've used fucking <laughs> Skype. It's been a long fucking time. I didn't know I had three accounts, though. That's fucking retarded. Well, you have four now. Yeah, exactly. But I don't it's... know. This will probably be the only time I use this one. Well, you probably have, you've used it in the past, and you created an account when you used it, and then you forgot about it, and then had to use it again, and then just created a new account, something like that. That's obviously what I must have been doing. I guess so, because I, I don't know, I used, to, I used to use Skype when that was like the only fucking thing there was. Yeah. I, you know, I was, I was trying to use Discord and um, Zoom, but that, I couldn't get the audio to fucking sync up to my <laughs> software. So Skype's the only one that actually works for me. Well, it's probably the best fucking one, honestly, when you think about it. But it's like, because that's a, during the pandemic, we couldn't fucking play any live show. So it was like, just constantly, like, I did, like everything I had to do was like, dumbass fucking live streams. And I hated it. Fucking hated it so much. Oh, so you guys were doing, like, live music on Skype? Well, just on, like, Zoom and shit. Yeah. But 
like, but you had to, like, get another fucking, uh, like, host, like, get a pay, like, for shit that <laughs> would, like, you know, stream it on fucking Facebook and shit. Right. But it was always fucking up, and, like, a, a lot of these, like, like Skype and all this shit, it's, like, they're not thinking about people playing music on it, so, like, a lot of the times the fucking, like, just speaking, like, 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 It'll condense voices more than everything else. Right. Because they think that you're like, you know, it's trying to fucking block out all that other bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, if you're trying to play and sing at the same time, you'll be playing and the guitar will be like, okay. And then as soon as you start singing, it condenses the fucking yeah. vocals completely. Yeah. And then you barely hear the fucking guitar at all. Yeah, I've I've run into that problem myself just doing interviews. Like, like I have this automaton. Have you seen these things before? No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just like a joke instrument but like um if i'm like my, my my microphone blocks out any digital sound and this is completely digital so like you wouldn't even be able to hear this thing unless unless my microphone was picking up my voice and you could hear this in the background you know it like completely blocks out any other sound other than your voice yeah i guess that's kind of similar to what you were saying Yep, and you know fucking me, and I'm fucking still a dipshit when it comes to any form of technology at all. <laughs> like, just a fucking idiot. I, can ba- I can't figure it out. Still? I'm like a fucking nine-year-old in a 25-year-old body when it comes to fucking internet shit. <laughs> well, man, like, you've been like that your whole life, then. Yeah, I fucking, I'm just horrible with it. I'm fucking horrible with it. Have you, have you been talking to Keegan at all? Yeah, I was fucking hanging out with me, me and Keegan. Or, like, Keegan's, like, my oldest friend other than, like, my cousin. And we, like, this September, we'd be, we'd be friends for 20 fucking years in September. Wow. But it's, like, we've fucking known each other for 20 years. We're only 25 fucking years old. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's fucking... We still hang out all the time. I was talking to him this morning. Yeah. I, uh... I was looking back at some of the old videos we used to make just to kind of reminisce yeah. and prepare for this. Yeah, <laughs> we were watching them a little bit ago, man. They're fucking. I just find the fu- there was like a point where it was like, oh man, cringy. I'm so cringed out by this. Yeah. And then, but now it's just like we were just fucking kids, and it was like it's just funny to watch. Now. Yeah. Like but I remember all the comments and like the fucking 100 way to, ways to die. <laughs> this isn't the real. This isn't the show. <laughs> I know. This is so stupid. I know. It's uh, <laughs> that's actually. The first episode of 100 Ways to Die that we made, that's my most viewed video on my channel with 60,000 yeah, views. 60,000 views. That's all, I looked it up and I was like, holy fucking shit. That is 60,000 views and it's just us like <laughs> being the cringiest little fucking loser kids <laughs> you could ever fucking imagine. We I know. Such little fucking weirdos. It's so weird to relate the humor that we had when we were kids to the humor we think of now, you know? Like, we did so much fucking shit that would not be socially acceptable nowadays. <laughs> Dude, just read a Facebook, like, post that you made from when you were, like, in grade 10. Yeah. You know, just, like, fag, 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 <laughs> retard. Yeah. Homo, like, over and over again. And then now you're just, like, me just saying that right now would probably get me fucked with a lot of people. Yeah, I know. It's, we used to throw those words around like they were nothing. Everybody did. <laughs> at the time it was like it wasn't i thought of as like you know you weren't saying it to like offend offend anybody you were just you know saying it but i mean at the same time you know fair enough it's a fucking shitty word yeah but you know context does matter to me as well yeah absolutely i'm big on that i talk about that all the time it's like people don't even consider context anymore it's like as soon as you say something you're automatically canceled and it's so shitty yeah it's fucking stupid as shit i think uh it depends on how you're saying like like that, that's what i just said like me just saying that right there in the context of that's what it used to be like mm-hmm. i guarantee there's people that i probably personally know that would be like you said the, <laughs> you said the words you spoke yeah you spoke those words with your lips? Yeah, I'm t- explaining something. I didn't go up and call anybody it. I didn't, <laughs> go and, like, run, like, I didn't scream that out at a gay person. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, and like, if if you were a famous person, people would isolate that clip of you saying faggot yeah, retard exactly. and use it well, against you. I ain't. 
Good thing I'm not. Good thing I'm just a poor ass fucking musician that makes no money. <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm sure you're gonna blow up one of these days. I mean, oh, you're. Oh yeah, I hope fucking so. That'd be nice. Well, you're making progress and you're sticking to it. I mean, that's really all you can do. Still going. Hopefully, I get to a point where I'm just making enough. I don't give a shit. If I'm just making enough to get by, I'd be fucking fine with that. So, like, you, you, you exclusively make your money through music. No, I work at a bar. I'm a bartender too, but like. Oh yeah. Not even a legit bartender, you know. I work at like a fucking dive bar where it's like we literally only sell beer, and like the the hardest mixed drink we would sell is a fucking Caesar. Oh really? Yeah, I would just like if somebody comes in, they're like, oh, "Make me a porn star." I'd be like, "No." <laughs> Do you guys? So you guys don't have any other alcohol besides like beer? Yeah, we have all the booze and shit. We're just like, no, we're not gonna make you these fucking dumb drinks. Just buy a fucking drink or get out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's just how it is there. That's that's very that's like so Nova Scotia right there. It's fucking awesome though. I love it. I make so much goddamn money doing it. Like I only work like three shifts a week. Like last night I worked, I made two hundred dollars in tips, two hundred thirty dollars in tips. Wow. And I don't bust my ass like a fucking normal bar. Like the place my girlfriend, my girlfriend works in a like more well-known, like, not well-known because this bar that I work at has been there, it's been in Helltech for, like, 60 years, but, like, uh-huh. it's, like, a more popular place with, like, younger people, right? Like, it's my favorite, but the place that she works at is my favorite bar, and it's, like, just awesome, but it's always crammed, packed, like, fucking full of people. It's always busy as shit. And so she's, like, busting her ass when she works. Like, fucking, it's hard. And then she makes, like, at the end of the night, like, $60 in tips because there's 20 fucking people working and they all split their tips. Oh, wow. That's that's really interesting. Like yeah, That's what I said, because she was like, I said every time I come home, I'm like, oh, I made 200 bucks. She's like, fuck <laughs> you. How the fuck did she, like, I made 20 bucks tonight. You made $200, and, I, and I, all I do is sit there and scan people's fucking VLT tickets <laughs> and just give them fucking rum and cokes and fucking alligator wow. So it's pretty chill then. It's awesome. I love it. I just sit there and listen to fucking music, and, you know, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I actually, I work at a cannabis dispensary now. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, but Yeah. I was in the oil field for fucking years, and I hated it. It was the worst thing ever. Yeah, I'd imagine that sucked. That's how I just got, I just finished bricklaying for like, I was a bricklaying for like a year and a half. With your dad? Well, he got me the job, and he's down Cape Breton still, but uh, through a company up here. Oh and yeah. I was in the fucking union and everything, but it sucked ass. I hated it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just like, I don't know. The the fucking, the people I had to work with were so stupid. Like, they're <laughs> they're just like a bunch of racist, sexist fucking morons, you know? Yeah, they're like, just like, like the alpha male type people, but they're not actually alpha males. They're just acting like they are. Yeah, just pretend. Well, that's like, I wouldn't say exactly like Brick Lane. It was, it was more like... I didn't have a problem with any of the dudes that I worked with Brick Lane. It's just they weren't really the kind of people that, like, you know, we didn't fucking, like, I didn't have any fucking common interests with them. So, like, going to work, I wasn't yeah. like, but that's the difference, like, I see with my dad and, like, me. He's like, my dad, my dad fucking loves Brick Lane uh-huh. because he's just, like, for him, it's just, like, going to work with the boys, chilling while yeah. they're with the boys on the fucking wall, building some fucking brick shit. Yeah. And, like, for me, it was just like, oh, I'm going to work with these dudes that I really don't you know, have anything in common with. I kind of just sat there, didn't really fucking, like, I wouldn't say much. I would just fucking work. Yeah. I'd just the, be fucking in my head all day, like, I can't wait to get the fuck out of here. And, yeah. like, that's the difference with, like, Gus's. That's the bar that I work at. It's, like, everybody, all the musicians go there. Like, most of the time, I'm just fucking talking to people, like, saying what's up, and then I'm just listening to music when I'm fucking not doing it, like, talking to anybody. That's, like, the worst part about it is that it's, like, kind of in a fucking shittier area, and, like, most of the fucking... Clientele or uh, VLT like gamblers like mm-hmm. like gambling addicts like the fucking amount of money, dude. <laughs> that these people, I'm like, where do you get? Where do you get the money from? Because yeah. they go like some of them are there every single fucking day from open to close, just on the VLTs, and that's it. And they're probably not even winning either. Oh, I, I'd imagine not. I put like the first day I worked, I like finished. And I, I took five dollars of my tips and I stuck it in the fucking machine uh-huh. and did one spin and one sixty bucks off five dollars. Oh wow! And I was like laughing about it and I was like looking at all the fucking like 
gambling addicts like staring at me all pissed off because they're sitting on the machines all fucking day spending <laughs> all the money. Yeah. <laughs> Five bucks in. And like some some VLT guys are like really fucking regimented where like they'll only use one specific machine or whatever. Oh, dude, some of them will come in and be like, if their if their favorite machine isn't open, they'll just be like. Okay, see you later. I'm gonna come back later. Yeah, and like it makes no sense because it's, it's not like it's, you know, he won on it probably like one time and he thinks he's like can win on it all the time. But they're all like random, aren't they? Well, it's just like a dopamine. Like it's honestly, there's no fucking, there is no technique. No. You press the button. You fucking press the button. That's it. That's all you fucking do. You pick yeah. a game, and then some, all the games are like some of them are different how they work, but. All you do in the end is just press a fucking spin button. Yeah. But like, that's what I'm saying with these, these people. Like, I'm like, fuck, maybe if they, they grow, grew up in, like, a time when there was, like, fucking, you know, video games and shit. They yeah. They have more of an issue with video games, which is obviously a better thing to be fucking uh-huh. addicted to because you're not spending all your goddamn money. Because, like, basically that's all the VLP is, is like, it's some shitty video game. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And, like, you have a very slight chance of winning, but usually you're just going to lose a shit ton of money. Yeah. Well, sometimes people win. Like, last night, literally five minutes before we closed, some dude won $1,500. Oh, wow. And he wasn't even there that long, either. Like, that guy was just lucky. Like, this is a dude that, like, I know him. Like, he comes in maybe once every three weeks and, mm-hmm. like, plays and shit, but, like, doesn't really. Like, he's really there just hanging out with his buddy. And yeah. he's fucking locked out, you know? Like, that was, this guy's not the kind of dude that's sitting there all fucking day spending his money on the fucking VLTs. And those are usually the guys who win, too. Like, the guys who just, like, are like, I'll just give it a shot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, then it's like, it's like, why... Like, the dudes that, like, even when they win, like, $1,500, like, the people that are fucking playing them all day long, like, what's the... Who cares? Like, you probably already spent fucking... You probably spent five grand this week on the fucking thing who gives a shit if you win fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> yeah i know it's i don't get it like i i tried vlts a few times and i just i can't get into it well it's just because lucky you fucking lose the first cut like i had that one win and then i was like oh i'm gonna do this after every shift i'm gonna put five bucks right. in and see if i win i said it two more times and both times just fucking ate the five dollars i'm like fuck <laughs> this shit i'm never playing one of these dumbass fucking things again yeah it's it's fucking it's it's brutal man gambling is just brutal it's just crazy it's a weird addiction i find yeah it's uh because it's like i get booze and drugs and shit like because it's like oh i feel awesome yeah you get but something like, from it every time yeah. you every time you drink a beer you get something from it yeah you feel a little bit better about yourself and shit it's yeah. like how, what does gambling do you get that dopamine when you win once every fucking like, yeah you know but like they obviously are winning and losing constantly because they played all day but like i guarantee they're losing more money than they're winning oh yeah absolutely they are what uh what's what's your favorite beer fucking keith spot still it's still keith's alexander keith's is my favorite <laughs> fucking beer for my entire life that's what i'm drinking right now Oh, you guys got... Keys. What are, do they sell fucking only two fours out there, or what? They no. They sell like 12 and shit. No, they sell everything. Yeah, because they're not in Ontario. Like, in Toronto, they're all, they only sell fucking two fours. No, it's not like that. You can you can even buy just one Keith if you wanted to. Yeah, that's... A, Nova Scotia has the fucking shittiest drinking laws at, at any province, I swear to fuck. Why? Well, you just can't... Okay, so the liquor store closes at 10 o'clock. That's normal, not during a fucking pandemic. Right now, like, up until recently, they were closing at 6 o'clock. Oh, shit. Which is horrible. You can't buy booze anywhere else except for the liquor store in Nova Scotia. Like, the NSLC right. is run by the province. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, you're not allowed. Like, there are other places that have that get permission, but they have to be, like, considered, like, a fucking craft brew place or, like, mm. a wine store. Yeah. And, like... So even then, like, you can only buy, like, craft beer and shit. You can't buy, like, fucking domestic beer. And it's, like, the bars are only open until 2 a.m. Like, now they're not. With the pandemic, they're only open until fucking 12. Right. And, like, booze is just insanely expensive. Like, a fucking 12-pack of teeth here is $27. Whoa. Like, it's just, fuck, man. Like, I just got back from Newfoundland. I went to Newfoundland for the first time, like, a week ago. Two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Of vacation, and like their liquor laws are fucking awesome out there like, yeah everything's a bit cheaper 
Like the bars out there are open till like three thirty in the morning. You can buy booze at any gas station. Yeah. Well, like, it's cheaper. It's long. it's cheaper because they don't. I mean, because they have competition. In Nova Scotia, it's all run by the province, so there's no competition to adjust those prices. Well, that's what I mean. Because yeah. when you go to Quebec, like Quebec has the best drinking laws at any place I've been. It's like literally just like shit is fucking dirt, dirt, dirt cheap in yeah. Quebec. Here. Like a, a 12 pack of keys in Quebec is like $13 or some shit. Like it's like a yeah. dollar a beer pretty much. It's, it's kind of like that in Alberta too. It's not quite that good, but it's close. Plus you only got to be 18 there. Yeah. And like I think their bars are open like way later than they are here. Well, there like, there's just like you can't like like in Newfoundland you could buy cigarettes at the bar. Like you could go up to the bar and they'd sell you cigarettes and shit. And you could yeah. buy like single cigarettes and crap. Like here it's just like you can't buy you can buy cigarettes in like any other place. I don't know why they they just for no fucking reason they're just like now nope, can't can't sell them at a bar. Sorry. Yeah. You've decided that that's morally wrong. To be able to buy them at the fucking bar. That that's like such a good idea. Like you can't you can't buy cigarettes at a bar in Alberta either. But um. But it's like why? Like what's yeah. the reason? <laughs> like I don't get it. Why is that illegal? I know there's <laughs> there's so many stupid laws. Like like the 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 liquor industry in Alberta is pretty good, but the cannabis side of things is just like Nova Scotia, where it's regulated by the province, which is really yeah. shitty. Oh, it's horrible here. Cause there was, it used to be there used to be like dispensaries. Ever, like the last year here, like the cops just didn't do shit about dispensaries for the most part. They would occasionally, but like for the most part, they just stopped giving a fuck. Yeah. So like there was dispensaries everywhere here, and it was all fucking awesome. Like cheap. I don't even smoke fucking weed just because it gives me makes my anxiety a fucking thousand times worse than it already is. Yeah. But like, all my friends do, and like there was just. You know, dispensaries everywhere, and it was like super cheap, and it was like good shit. You know what you were getting and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as it was legalized, just fucking every single one of them just got busted down hardcore. And now it's just you got to buy weed at the liquor store here. You have to go to the NSLC to buy weed here, which is so weird because yeah, in Al- weird in Alberta, like you're not allowed to have cannabis and alcohol anywhere near each other. Like if you're selling cannabis, you can only sell cannabis. And it has to be locked in a safe in a in a government regulated building. It can be a private business, but you have to you have to order all your cannabis through the AGLC, which is the Alberta Liquor and Game Commission. Yeah, and it's just fucking weird, man. How it's like that's how damn it is, though. Shit, like this regulation, like fucking regulation, this asshole. Like I just got literally my firearms license just came in the mail yesterday, and I did the course and sent it out eight months ago. What course? Just the firearm, the PAL course. Oh. Like, just for the non-restricted, too. Oh, yeah. Like, not even for my restricted. I, tr- I signed up for the restricted course, but then, because of the pandemic, it got fucked. You, you have your firearm license, right? I did. It's expired. Oh, uh, yeah. You probably don't shoot that much, though. No, not really. A lot of people do shoot out here, though. Yeah, definitely more than fucking down here, like. A lot of people have guns down here. I think it's a fucking misconception when people are like, oh, Canadians don't own guns. No, like, Canadians fucking own guns. Yeah, it's like, even down here, like, I think people just don't realize. Even down here, people are like, well, just no one owns a gun. I'm like, like, shit loads of people do. You just don't know that they do. Because it's not, it's not the same, like, people don't realize the fucking regulations and the fucking way, like, how strict it is. Mm-hmm. If you own a gun, it's like, fucking, everything's gotta be like, put away like everything's gotta be in a lock safe the ammunition has to be locked in a separate fucking uh safe from your from any of your firearms and shit like yeah yeah people just don't realize because you know you, you can't it's in canada you can't just have a gun fucking laying out <laughs> no on your goddamn coffee table yeah and like there's rigorous courses you gotta go through and there's a background check too isn't there well it goes this is what i had to do just for the non-restricted which for anybody that doesn't know what that is that's just hunting rifles like long guns yeah it's like hunting rifles and shotgun but pretty much fucking it uh and so you have to take up the pal course when you take that that's like a one-day course takes like eight hours and then when you do that you got to do a uh you have to do a practical test and a written exam and you got to get an 80 at least an 80 on both from the past and then when you pass you got to go and pay for like you need to basically do the same thing you need to do to get a passport you gotta go like pay to have your picture taken and shit. 
and then fill out this shit, this form, and you got to get two references, like two oh, people yeah. you know, to like rep be, for the RCMP are going to call them and be like, yo, is he a fucking nutcase that's going to like fucking, you know, shoot up a school or some shit? <laughs> and it's like, you got to do that. And then it's like, if you were like recently divorced or if you had, if you just broke up with your girlfriend, yeah. then they have to call them too. And if they're like, oh yeah, he's a nutcase, then fucking they won't get you. And then anyway, you send it to the RCMP, and then when it, when it gets to the RCMP, there's a 40-day waiting period where it sits in the office for 40 days as a, they call it a cool-down period. <laughs> you know, just in, case, just in case I went and did all that other shit, I'm still planning on both fucking going and blowing somebody's fucking face off. Right. Uh, you know, that 40 days is supposed to cool me down. <laughs> and then, yeah. They go, and then after the 40 days, then they open it up, then they fucking, like, examine shit, then they call your references. Then they do all this shit, and then they decide, they decide, it's not like a guarantee, like, if they decide that, like, oh, we don't want to give this guy a fucking firearms license, they'll just be like, nah, yeah. no firearms license for you. And yeah. then you get the mail. It takes, it literally takes from six months to a year. I did the course and sent my shit out eight months ago, and I just got it yesterday. Right. Like, so, like, that's the difference people don't get of, like, when people are like, oh, band, like, what, like. You know, people people shouldn't be able to own them because it's like, oh, it's too easy to get. No, it fucking isn't. Maybe well, the states is. It, it yeah, in, in America, you could literally be any lunatic and walk into a gun store and just show your ID and buy a gun. Yeah, just as long as you're 18. Yeah. You just show them on your ID. There is a waiting period, I think, in most states, but it's like only three days or some shit. Yeah, but like Texas or or those uh, those really uh, conservative states, like you don't have to do anything. You could be anyone. No, you don't fucking do it. But, like, this is the thing, too, though, in Canada. It's like, do you not think, like, I could have I could have found a fucking gun. I could have got one illegally a lot easier than I just did. And I don't even, I still yeah. don't even have the fucking gun. I'm just talking about getting the license to yeah. be able to buy a gun. Yeah. Like, I still don't even own a fucking gun. Yeah, like, like, even if a lunatic wanted to go shoot up a school or something, he's not going to go through the legal process of getting a no. gun. It's a lot easier to just get one illegally. Yeah. Like, just look at, like, the fucking largest mass shooting in Canadian history just happened 20 minutes away from where I am right now. Yeah, I know. And, and all of his guns were illegal. Right. So it's like, what, and then the, and then the government, they still go, oh, well, now we're, ta- now we're making this, doing this giant sweeping gun ban. And it's like, what is your fucking, what is that going to do to prevent the next fucking giant shooting? Yeah. It's, it's going to do fuck all. It's going to do nothing. Absolutely nothing. And, like, people always look at, like, AR-15s as, like, assault rifles, but they're literally just a modified rifle. Like, it's not, it just shoots. Well, just think about, th- like, uh, that's, people don't, like, that's why fucking Trudeau was using bullshit terms saying military style rifle yeah you know military grade rifles it's like that's why he wasn't saying assault rifle because he knows that anybody that knows fucking anything about a gun would go an ar-15 is not a fucking assault rifle there's like people just look at it and it looks scary to them because it looks like it looks like an m16 that's what they just it looks like the guns that they have on tv that the army guys use and shit so it must be what army guys use yeah yeah yeah. no it's completely fucking like this is the this is the, the hypocrisy of the fucking thing like so the first gun i'm gonna get is an sks which is just like a cheap yeah at russian fucking rifle and it's and it's a center fire semi-automatic rifle my buddy has one of those yeah and they're fucking awesome but guess what now in canada any ar-15 is is, is banned but there is literally what the way that these two wet like these two rifles function are identical. Yeah. Like an SKS, which is still legal in Canada and isn't even considered a restricted firearm. It's a non-restricted. I can buy it with my non-restricted license. Right. Doesn't doesn't function in any way any different to an AR-15. The only difference is that it's made out of wood, so it doesn't look scary to people. Yeah. And secondly, the fucking round is a 7.62 compared to a 5.56. A 7.62 is a fucking huge round. <laughs> like, it's way bigger. It's way. It's got way more power than a 5.56 that's in an AR-15. It, like, that's just the shit that, that shows that the liberals 
and Trudeau have no fucking clue what they're talking about or what they're doing with the fucking gun shit. And right. when, all it shows to me is that, you know, people always go like, well, they're not, they're not going to take your guns away. They're not, they're not taking them all away. They're just getting rid of those ones. And I'm like, it's not going to be enough for them. They're going to go, there's going to be another shooting. There's going to be another shooting. And they're going to do the same thing next time. Now we got to get rid of these guns. Yeah. Because you get rid of one, there's still, like, no matter what, any gun, you can you can do any sort of damage with any sort of gun, right? Yeah. You don't need a gun to fucking kill someone either. Yeah. So I get, like, you know, with it, when it comes to the mass shootings and shit, you know, they're preferably going to want a gun. But it's like... It's not the guns that kill the people, it's the people. And honestly, that's true. A lot of people go, that's such a stupid statement. It's like, well, fucking, are you going to ban every uh, Kia Forte when some fucking lunatic starts start ripping down the fucking sidewalk? In the yeah. goddamn thing, plowing people over. Yeah, so exactly. Gonna, well, it's gonna like you're not gonna ban, and everybody's gonna go. Well, that's a fucking stupid analogy. Everybody drives cars. It's like, okay, so why do you need a car that goes over a hundred kilometers an hour? Yeah, that's exact. Well, that's a good comparison. Cars, you, need that. you don't need that. So ban all cars that go <laughs> over a hundred kilometers an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it doesn't make any sense at all. No, it's just bullshit because. Uh, People that don't know anything about guns, they have yeah. no knowledge of guns or yeah. firearm safety or how they work in Canada. They, yeah. they, they just they think it's doing something, but it absolutely is doing nothing at all. It's just because gun. It's just because guns are associated with killing people. Like a car is not associated with killing people. Well, exactly. Because well, people always say that too. They go, "Well, guns are specifically made to kill people." Yeah. I'm like, not no, not really. <laughs> They're not specifically made just to kill people. They're specifically made to do whatever you choose to do with them. Yeah. If you, if you want it to just be a sport shooter, if you like sport shooting, then that's what your gun's for. If you want it to protect yourself and your family, well, then that's what it's it's for security. Yeah. Now, if you're a fucking lunatic and you want to go on a killing spree, then yeah, it's for a fucking kill, killing spree. Just like how your Kia Forte would be, too, if I wanted to go mow everybody down on the fucking sidewalk. Yeah, I know. And it would be... <laughs> It would be just as easy to kill people in a car, a, a crowd of people in a car, as it would with, you know, a fucking assu- or an AR-15. Well, it's like, look at the, that what happened in Toronto a couple of years ago. That guy killed like 15 people or some shit, I'm pretty sure. With his car or van? Yeah, that fucking simp, what the fuck was Oh, he yeah, was? the incel. <laughs> yeah, he was an incel. Yeah. And he fucking like ran over like, I think he killed 15 people. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was like 15 it was a lot. people or some shit. With was, a fucking car. Yeah, it was a lot. Like, he just ran everybody over with a fucking van. It's like, look at, like, in uh, France a couple years ago when that the terrorist attack happened where they just had a fucking big truck. They killed a hundred, like, over a hundred <sighs> people. Yeah, he I know. He ran into a bunch of people. And, like, and again, like, it doesn't matter if you ban the guns or not. They're going to get the guns no matter what. That, that's what it always comes down to anyway. Yeah. It's like the only thing you do when you ban those firearms is you're just fucking over law-abiding Canadian Canadian citizens. That's literally all you're doing. So they're gonna they're doing this like, oh well, we're doing a gun buyback. It's like, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna buy an AR-15 that somebody bought for fifteen hundred dollars. You're gonna buy it back with, for two hundred dollars <throat> with their fucking tax money. Yeah. Like, oh wow, you're gonna use the, our tax money to buy back our own fucking goddamn shit for so, yeah. a fraction of what it's worth. So like yeah, it's it's we're basically just paying to get rid of our guns. Then it's just stupid. Yeah, it, yeah, because they're going, oh, we're doing a buyback. It's like, well, that's you, is Trudeau paying for it himself? I fucking doubt it. <laughs> I'd imagine you're you're gonna use tax money, right? And like yeah. people don't even realize there's like collectible fucking like. I saw this one post like, and a, and a couple people in Canada own these. It's like, but these Benelli fucking duck, like shotguns like duck hunting shotguns that are like made in the 1800s yeah uh that are now considered illegal and they're like rich dude guns like they're worth two hundred thousand fucking dollars yeah it's like so you're gonna you're gonna use tax money to buy back a fucking single god like you're gonna have to what else are you gonna do unless you're gonna go to the guy's house and go here's your 200 bucks for your fucking three hundred thousand dollar fucking Benelli shotgun yeah, it's it, it literally like not. There's so many things that are going wrong in not only our country but the whole world, 
it just makes me wonder like what the hell the future is going to be like you know it just seems like it's heading in a bad direction every day uh, oh it definitely does it's like it's just weird how like it's just a lot of like mirrored shit to like the 60s when like you look back at like what the 60s were like with like all the protests yeah and like how there was like so much like shittiness between like race relations and like yeah just everything being super divisive as hell uh-huh you know like it just seems like at this point in time it's like on both sides it's like you know, if you're a right wing person, I don't consider myself either of those things. I'm a centrist and I consider yeah, myself yeah, a libertarian. Yeah, yeah. But, like, if you look at, like, super right wing people, they go, like, you know, it's it's like, if you don't agree with every single fucking thing I agree with, then yep. fuck you and fuck off and you're not part yeah. of my fucking cause and you're my enemy. That I, goes the same for the liberals. They do yeah. the exact same thing. I was, just, I was just talking about this in my last episode where there's a problem we have right now where everyone is either completely right wing or completely left wing we yeah. don't we don't look at the good and the bad aspects of both of of both parties we're just we're just focusing on on a completely one side or the other and we can't that's not the way to do it at all yeah but that's exactly what i'm saying man it's like that's what it's like it's like either you're with me or you're my fucking enemy and fuck off now yeah and it's like we, we can't have any differing opinions at all you have to fucking you have to go with the goddamn status quo. That's it. That's the only fucking thing you can do. If you are, like, you know, like, this is the thing. It's like, people probably listen to this are probably thinking that I'm, like, a super conserved yeah. guy. No, they I'm will, yeah. Because I like guns. Yeah. It's like, uh, on, for the most part, I'm way more fucking liberal. Yeah. But, like, that, that's just one issue. It's just one thing. issue, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, And when the gun ban happened, like, I'm a musician. Dude, I don't fucking know a single person that isn't liberal as shit. Like, all my friends are fucking hardcore liberal. Right. Because that's what musicians are like. But, like, so when the gun ban shit happened, I, like, put this fucking, uh, you know, like, shared a petition. You know, one of those dumbass things that do nothing on Facebook. <laughs> more, so, more so just show my fucking, you know, yeah, this is fucking bullshit. Kind of, and I got fucking shit on mm -hmm. from every fucking court. Like, all of my friends messaging me and shit. Like, literally one of my friends said, I can't believe... Like, she, she was like, I almost cried when I saw that you fucking shared that. I'm like, why? Yeah. And because like, I don't agree with every single fucking liberal goddamn talk yeah. I, I actually like guns. And I, and I you know, I'm, I'm not fucking, like, like, people just think, like, if you're, if you're pro-gun, then you're, you're pro-fucking violence. Right. Which just isn't fucking true. Yeah, we, we, we have to... We have to start accepting the fact that we're all not going to agree on everything. No. Always. You shouldn't, you shouldn't anyway. Yeah, like you can still be friends with someone even if you don't agree with everything that they do, you know? If it gets to a point where they cross a line and they're being completely racist and like well, misogynistic. Well, like neo-Nazi or some shit, then it's yeah. like, yeah, of course. But if they're just like, you know, oh, I like guns. Yeah. Or like, oh, you know, I actually uh, voted for the uh, conservative party. Yeah, because because like, like because like up until that point, this person was good friends with you, you know. So why does this little thing change the friendship that you guys would have, you know? Like lots of people fucking just like I have a buddy. This didn't happen to me. This is my buddy. Uh, two of my buddies, but they're like best friends with each other. They were forever. But like one of my friends is like pretty conservative, not like fucking overly. Just, like, leans to the right more. And the other guy's, like, super-duper liberal, fucking hardcore liberal. Yeah. Like, not, like, you know, he doesn't do He's not a little bit liberal. He's super fucking hardcore, like, hey, cab, fuck the police. We should fucking just kill all the fucking cops. Just round them up. Fuck right. Them, type guy. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was, like, with all this shit, with, like, BLM and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, my buddy's just kind of, my other buddy that's, like, a little more conservative, just, like, open about it, too, right? Like, he doesn't fucking hide it. He'll say it to anybody. He'll share stuff and everything and he just was like you know i don't think all cops are bad i think that you know shit like that and then when that happened like these guys have been best friends for like years right and as soon as that happened he just like messaged him was like i'm not yeah. friends with you anymore and i'm not fucking speaking with you anymore and i can't fucking be around you anymore because you have these views about how you don't want all the cops fucking murdered yeah <laughs> like, it, like, it was so <laughs> like the blm movement was so hardcore that like even minor, like anyone who had a following, if you didn't speak out against, you know, like cops and Black Lives Matter or whatever, 
people were shitting on the people who weren't speaking. You know, yeah. e- even, it, you know, they didn't say anything controversial. They didn't say anything at all. Yeah, it's because they didn't say anything, though. Yeah. They're like, oh, you must, be on the, you must be on the shitty cop side. But it's like, when you look at it, the way that I look at it, it's like, it's, to me, that's kind of just an ignorant thing to say all cops are bad. Yeah. Or, or, to, con- or to fucking assume that all cops are that's, shitty. Yeah, because that's... Cops, because it's like, not even just that it's that it is the same as of, of, of like pro- profiling an entire fucking group of people it is literally that it's not the same that's what it's doing yeah but like but second of all just because it's a more complicated issue than that i'm yeah. sorry to say you like you're, you're kind of simplifying an extremely complicated fucked up issue that has right. to be addressed right and it shouldn't be addressed as oh it's as easy as all cops are shitty and we should just get rid of them all I know, and that's that's so contradicting to what they're trying to do, you know? They're trying to spread awareness about racism and that not, you know, all black people are bad, but yet at the same time, they're turning around and saying all cops are bad. How is that any different than being... Well, and it's like, and, but it's like, and of course, not all of these people think that. Like, yeah. Like, of course, not all of the BLM movement is like, fucking, let's get rid of the cops and every single cop's a piece right. of shit. Right. But like... It's just like how the media does with everything. They fucking they focus on that yeah. one thing because that's what's going to fucking get people to listen. Yeah, and that's then like, and then it turns in. Then that's where the divisiveness comes in, and then that's where everybody starts fucking hating each other and turning into the point where they're just like, "Fuck you! You don't agree with every single thing I agree with, so you're a piece of shit, and we're not friends anymore. Fuck off." Yeah, well, like the the first steps into into coming into like a completely communistic or or totalitarian regime is when is when the government starts to control the media and takes away your guns. Those are the first two steps. And then it's free speech. And that's all happening. But that's another thing that I was like, because people go like, as soon as you got into that that conversation, where people are like, oh, what do you think the government's going to like, you know, take all your guns away? Like, because you got to fight a tyrannical government. It's like, well, the government's not tyrannical. It's like, well, but that's the, yeah, they're not now. Yeah. Like people, are, like, people just look at it, it's like, it is hard to believe, it seems like it would never happen, that the government would fucking turn into that, but it's happened over and over and over again in the past. Yeah. So, why would you, why, it's, it, to me, it's just ignorant to, to expect that the government's just not going to do that, that that's just never going to happen. Yeah, it's because people, generations have grown up without any problems like that, so we're just expecting things to stay the status quo, but we yeah, gotta, we, like, we gotta look at the past. Yeah, you gotta look at the past and, like, look at the fucking mistakes, but I'm not saying that, I'm not even saying that, oh, Trudeau wants to be a fucking dictator. I don't think that. I think Trudeau truly believes these dumbass fucking things that he's doing are helping, but I just don't think they are helping. I think they're doing, yeah. they're, like, they're literally making shit a lot worse. Well, Trudeau's like, just, Trudeau's just a follower. He's not really a leader. Well, he just does whatever, but what he thinks that the people that are voting for him wanted to do which is like well, that's what every fucking politician does like that's what's annoying about politicians it's like what, what like the fact that they just have so much money and they have something like like just look at trudeau in the way of you know this is his third ethics violation right now that shit with the we like have you been following that at all no there's like this fucking charity that his family has bit had close ties to for like years and years and years now like I don't, I don't know if he was specifically paid. He might have, before he was a prime minister, been paid to speak for their rallies and shit. But it's like a fact that his wife, his mother, like one of his brothers or some shit, had all been paid recently to go to speaking rallies and getting paid shitloads of money to like speak for this fucking oh, charity. Yeah. yeah. And then and then Trudeau like personally gave them like a 200 like million or it might even been billion. I can't even remember exactly dollar grant right like so obviously that's super immoral as a fucking prime minister yeah well the same the same issue was going on with hillary clinton like she makes the majority of her money just making speeches like that you know yeah and she's just as controversial oh and that's what i'm saying though but this but that's the, the issue that i'm going on about more so is that it's like for him whenever he gets caught doing this fucking shit he just has to say sorry. Yeah. That's it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's because it's because he's so fucking liberal, and so they, you know, if he if he was conservative and he just said sorry, they would, you know, he'd be fucking shot in the face or something. Well, most most people would go fucking insane. Most like people our age, 
But it's more so like I'm saying that it's, it's bullshit that, you know, if I get caught and fucking making a, a, a fraudulent Serb, you know, if I'm getting Serb fraudulently, yeah. I could get a giant huge fine or potentially go to jail. For yeah. It. yeah. I can't just say, well, sorry, guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't know it, I didn't know it was bad. Yeah. I won't do it again. I know. It's so fucked it doesn't make sense and it, it, it you know i don't like and even just expressing your opinion is a fucking shit show because you can get literally canceled from just like saying something it's so it's it's so complicated like a lot of the shit that i just said on this like people that i know will be pissed about yeah saying. Even though to me it doesn't seem very, it doesn't seem that, you know, controversial, the shit that I'm saying. Right. Like, for the most part, it's that, oh, I like guns and I have a firearm license. But it, it, ne- but it needs to be said because people are too scared to express how they actually feel because they're worried they're going to fucking, you know, and have their career ended or something. People have literally had their careers ended because they said something stupid on Twitter like 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, exactly. But, like, that's the thing. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that as much anymore. And I feel like... For the most part, people most people are rational, and no one's gonna look at what I said. Yeah. And be like, oh, Rudy's a piece of shit. <laughs> Rudy's a fucking racist piece of shit because I don't think I, I don't think I said anything that would be, and I'm not. Yeah, but, but pe- people 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 would take what you said out of context. Some people, would. Some people definitely would. Yeah. For sure. I'm just saying, for the most part, people aren't gonna do it. And right. Like, I'm not. I'm not gonna fucking spend my time fucking being worried that because I'm saying shit like. Anything that I just said there, it's like, I believe it. I believe all that. I'm not going to say that I don't. I don't think any of it was that controversial. It's just, like, that's the thing that's weird is about nowadays. Like, the shit that we've been talking about is considered so controversial. Right. Like, me just saying that I don't think all cops are bad. Yeah. Like, could get me. Some people will fucking literally take that as, like, you are a piece of shit. Like, could, you're part of the yeah. problem. Like, could you imagine if we stopped funding the police and we had no... We had no police anymore. There would be complete fucking chaos on the streets. Well, a, I don't know. I don't understand what they because they want to get like, oh, we'll, we'll get social workers to do it all. It's like, what well, do you? What do you? What's a social worker gonna do when you know some dude's got his fucking yeah? The problem. And his wife's tied up in the basement. and He's ready to blow their heads off and his right after. Yeah. Like, the, the 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 problem is not that we're funding the police. The problem is that we're not training these police officers enough. They get that's, minimal that's amounts of training. And like that's another thing too. I should mention that I don't think there. I'm not. Tr- I'm not sitting here trying to say there's no issue with the police. Uh, there's a big one. One of the biggest ones is that cops do fucked up shit and they get away with it all the time. Yeah. And even when they get caught, a lot of the time they just get a fucking little slap on the wrist with a paid vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they get a. They get a paid. They get a paid suspension, right? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I got a week vacation for fucking blowing somebody's head up non-just justifiably right. like fucking it's just that's the biggest thing for me is that it is too easy to be a cop and, and like, like well I'm, like when you when you look at the military they're trained to such a high extent where they know how to compose themselves in stressful situations where they're not going to you know get themselves in a sticky situation like these cops will get into the cops are not trained to a high enough extent as like the military is well a lot of them like a lot of it's like that's things that the military is a is just run federally. So it's just one entity, the, the Department of National Defense, that is in control of them. The, the, a, a difference with, like, policing is that, for the most part, it's it differs from every police station because they yeah. have their, their own budget. And then, right. you know, like, one police station, like, the HRM police might be trained completely different than the Cape Breton Regional Police. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because they might, they're not controlled under one entity and right. have a standard across the fucking board. Yeah, um, that's true. The, military. the standard goes is exactly the same for everything from fucking Vancouver to Newfoundland. Yeah. It's, uh... I guess I never really thought about it like that, but yeah, that's totally true. Well, it's like... But even for the most part, it's just, it's just too easy to be a cop. Right. Like not, not even just the training. It literally comes down to like, it's yeah. just, you, you don't know, even... you gotta, like, I saw somebody make a post the other day, which really 
made sense to me of like this lawyer made this post and he was like I had to go to school for 11 years to learn the law and right. a cop only has to go for one year of college to, to enforce it yeah and like they don't even have to be physically fit either <laughs> a lot of the times mm-hmm. like well it's just like it's just look at like the it's just all fucked. Like, the, even with the shooting there, like, the RCMP fucked that up so hard. Like, and I'm not even, I'm not blaming, like, a lot of people got pissed about that, too, with people being like, oh, the RCMP fucked that up so much. I'm not talking about the fucking first responders that literally stopped the shooting. Like, I'm talking about the bureaucratic fucking pencil pushers that are sitting in their dumbass office, and that they don't, that, like, they didn't send out, like, we have this provincial alert system. Uh-huh. Right? And a week before it, they used it for COVID, like being like, stay inside, there's a fucking pandemic. It's like, yeah, we know, it's been fucking a month and a half, we've all been <laughs> stuck in here. And then, anyway, and then the shooting, like, I don't even know if you know much about the shooting, but the shooting lasted 14 hours. Oh, I didn't know that. It, took, it lasted 14 hours, and it took place over 150 kilometers. What? Yeah, the guy was just, he was like, dude, like, he fucking, so he had a... He bought a retired police cruiser, and then, and then made it look exactly like an RCMP cruiser. Jesus. And then, and then he also had an RCMP, like an authentic RCMP uniform. Wow. So like that's like a lot of the shooting was like he would just like go to people's houses. Like the shooting was weird because it was like mixed like with people that he knew like personally and just random people. Wait, so he would so, like, like just show up at people's houses and shoot them or something? Well, yeah, he'd like drive in and then he would fucking have like the lights going on the cruiser and shit and just be dressed like a cop so like even if he knew him you know this was like middle of the night two in the morning when right you get up and you see a cop standing at the door with the police lights on and shit you're gonna go answer the door yeah right? yeah yeah i could think that this guy's gonna blow my fucking face off but that's what he was doing wow like he was doing shit like that he's pulling people over on the highway just shooting them point blank holy he fuck killed, yeah he killed an rcmp officer he shot another one but like and he lit, like, fucking a couple houses on fire. Like, he lit his, like... And, like, some of the reasoning behind, of, like, what he was doing, like, what all the, like, what the psychiatrists, psychiatrists are saying he was, is they call him, like, a... He's, like, a injustice collector, is what they were saying. What so does like, that mean? No, it just means that he was, like, every every little thing he would think was, like, a slight against him. Like, shit, like... Like, one of the oh. reasons he, like, he lit this fucking dude's house on fire because he thought... Like, he thought that the guy copied the tile on his house. <laughs> what? So that was, like, one of the reasons why he lit that place on fire. Another person, he killed this, like, school teacher and lit her house on fire. Not because of her, but because his uncle that he had a legal dispute with used to live in the house, like, five years before that. Damn. And just did it because it used to be his house. Did he end up killing himself at the end of all this? No, the fucking RCMP fucking shot the fucking million holes into him oh down like, yeah, field like this is what's fucking and this is what i'm saying like they didn't even find him right like he 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 went to the gas station in enfield to refuel his car because he was headed towards Dartmouth. and when he fucking was getting the gas the fucking tactical like the rcmp swat team pulled up to get gas themselves oh my god like they didn't even know he was there they just pulled up to get gas too and then they got out and they saw him there and they were like oh fuck and they just shot the shit out of him yeah that's 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 shoddy workmanship right there especially on the police but this was the biggest like thing in nova scotia like whatever he was talking about was like they didn't use the fucking provincial alert system to tell people that this was even happening right like it went on for 14 hours they didn't they used twitter (laughs) <laughs> they said they literally the RCMP made a statement. They were like, "We thought that we could reach more people using Twitter." That makes um, no and sense. Yes, and this is out in rural Nova Scotia. Like it's not like in it's not in fucking you know in Toronto where every guy like yeah. for one you need for one you need to have Twitter, and then second of all you have to follow the fucking goddamn Nova Scotia RCMP on Twitter. Yeah, and the majority of people don't have Twitter. You know, like if you're if you're older than like thirty years old, you're not, you're more than likely not on Twitter. Dude, I'm twenty five and I don't have a fucking Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> like that, like how dumb of a statement. Oh, we thought we could reach more people with Twitter. Like, no, you're fucking stupid. Literally, everybody has a cell phone nowadays. Yeah. Like pretty much everybody does. 
No, like ev- literally everybody has a cell phone. Yeah, that's what I mean. And, and like, this alert system that I'm talking about, like, isn't even just, uh, like, on your phone. It, it sends it to your computer, it yeah. sends it to your TV, and it sends it over the radio. It's over everything. So it's like, why the fuck would you not use that? Yeah. Said, like, that's why one of the dudes, the, one of the victim's, like, husbands was, like, on the news the next day, like, bawling his eyes out, being like, you know, we knew, because they saw it on Twitter, at, you know, because it started at, like, one in the morning, and they saw it off, like, oh, there was an active shooting, and that's it. Right. And then they go, and, and then they wake up eight hours later to go to work, and his wife's going to work, thinking it's all over, because who thinks that that's going to last 14, 14 hours? hours? And she's on the way to work and gets pulled over by the guy, and he fucking blows her head off. Wow. Like, so, like, he was, like, super pissed, like, why would you not use this fucking, like, we knew, like, if we knew, if we knew that it was still happening, she wouldn't have went to work. Yeah, that's, that's so fucked up. I didn't know, I didn't know it it was, you know, this intense. I thought it was just, like, a quick shooting in a mass group. There's still a bunch of crazy shit coming out out about it, because, like, the courts, like, pulled all the shit, and the RCMP is so, like... Just holding everything. There's shit coming out like that he could have potentially been a fucking RCMP informant or like, or or a, an agent or some shit like working for them because huh? like a couple of day a couple of days before the like not that they had like I'm not saying that oh the RCMP knew this was gonna happen or wanted this to happen but it's just that people are people like, people are starting to think oh, there's evidence coming out that he could have potentially been working for them. Because apparently he had, like, a bunch of friends and the Hells Angels and shit. And, like, his next-door neighbor was, like, this uh, guy that was involved with, like, Colombian fucking cartels and shit that just got into prison, like, two years ago. And was actually the guy that made the decals for his fucking fake RCMP cruiser. Wow. There's that. And, like, one of the, the biggest things is that two or, two or three days before the shooting happened, he withdrew $450,000 from a Brinks... Like, like just a Brinks location, huh? Which apparently isn't. Uh, of what I've read, apparently isn't legal, or or you like you can't do that as just a normal person, and that is the exact way that that the RCMP pays out its informants for specific things. Wow, this looks like a whole conspiracy theory now. Well, it's like that's. I don't even fucking. I'm not saying I believe that right shit. I don't know. There's a, like it, it's also been confirmed the dude's a the dude was a millionaire so it's like i don't know maybe he's just like a lot of people are saying that he was just really you know there was another expert that was talking about being like the rcmp would never pay an informant that much especially for like you know people speculating that it has something to do with the hell's angels and the hell's angels haven't been prevalent in, no, in nova scotia since the fucking 90s like they yeah. do have they do have a chapter that's fucking really struggling to fucking try to regain power in the province but it's nowhere near what it used to be like in the 90s yeah like this is like an rcmp expert that's just like yeah they wouldn't fucking you know they would never give out half a million dollars for for a stupid little fucking tiny chapter of the hell's angel in nova scotia right but uh and the guy's a millionaire so i don't know you know he obviously had the money for that and he was obviously paranoid and fucked up and people said he was extremely paranoid about the pandemic and everything how? Wh- why was he a millionaire? What did he do? He was a denturist. Oh. He made fucking dentures for people. But I think he had multiple businesses. Like, that's something, too. It's like, in Dartmouth, his denture clinic, like, everybody knew it because it had these, like, big, dumbass novelty teeth on the fucking side of it. Uh-huh. That was and his like, place? Yeah, it was his fucking denture clinic. That's why everybody was like, oh, it was that guy's fucking place. Wow. But the guy was just, like, a fucking, like, when it comes down to it, he's just a fucking psychopath. Right. And, I mean, it, it happens. Yeah, and he was obviously very planned out. He had a fucking authentic RCMP uniform with, like, an almost... Like, just look at the pictures of it after this, like... Yes. Yeah. Of the cruiser. It looks, you would never know. It looks identical to a fucking RCMP cruiser. Right. It's just It was just fucked, man, when it happened. It was like, so many people died. And, like... It's just weird, like, especially, like, you know what it's like growing up here. It's like, that shit doesn't, like, when somebody gets murdered, it's, like, big, big fucking news. Big news, yeah. Yeah. yeah like, like, the biggest mass shooting in Canadian history, 22 people. Although it does happen, though. Like, there was a fucking, like, the McDonald's murder and, like, the... Yeah, it happens occasionally, like... And in, 
in that then, park, that park in Sydney when that guy got stabbed. Donald Marshall got. Yeah. So that was like a big. Ra- that was like the biggest racial case in Canadian history. Yeah. Because he was like, you know, he got fucking. Basically, the cops were just like, "Yeah, you did it because you're a fucking native." So. <laughs> and like, and then, they made they made a movie out of that, and we remember we watched that movie in eighth grade. Yeah, I think we watched it in Mr. Fucking Unsworth's class. That's his name. How did yeah. you remember his name? <laughs> You know what's so funny is like get, get like growing up and then going to bars and like seeing teachers and shit. Wait, and you like, see? You, you want to smoke a fucking doobie? And you're you like, see your teachers? Oh, well, well in Cape Breton. Well, like who like, have you seen? I have this t- well, just like, do you remember the substitute teacher? This is the guy that I see the most. Is uh, Mr. Gillis? Do you remember him? I don't know. I don't. He might not have had him. He might have just been an essay. Oh yeah. Well, like, he's, I see him at Governor's all the time, he's just, like, fucking smoking doobies and shit, like, ooh, you know, <laughs> fucking fucked up. That's pretty well, cool. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking funny, man. Anyway, I gotta be, I gotta be taking off pretty soon here, I gotta go see Jurassic Park with the old woman. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's They're fine. Playing Jurassic Park at the movie theaters, man. So you guys are allowed, you're allowed in movie theaters now? I guess so, I didn't think we were until fucking, you know, this week, I was like... One check, but they're like, you know how like nobody's releasing movies right now because they want to make more money when the fucking pandemic's over. Yeah. Yeah, it's like they're just playing like old matinees. Like right now at the theaters, they got like the Goonies. Oh, my girlfriend just walked in the room right now. Hello. <laughs> we're on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> but no, we're on like uh, they got like the Goonies and like fucking Jurassic Park and like oh yeah, he and like all these old ass movies playing so. Yeah, well, I was kind of thinking, like, maybe maybe movie theaters were going to be com- completely gone after all this, you know? Because they're not like, making any not. money. They're, like, my favorite fucking... It's, like, literally one of my favorite things to do is go to the movie still. I yeah. fucking love it. It's awesome. It's so much better than just sitting at home on Netflix. Well, it's like... And they just got... The, that's what I say on the boys whenever you go, they go, want to go to the movies. I'm like, I don't get enough money for that. And they're like, why? The tickets are that. I'm like, I'm not going to go to the movies and not eat the fucking concession bullshit that's way overpriced. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry, but that's one of the best parts of the movie. Like, yeah. you can't hide the fucking popcorn at the movies is just better than anywhere else. Yeah, it really is. Anyway, bud, it was good talking to you for a bit. I'll definitely come back on again if you'd like. Yeah, for sure. Uh, talk, talk with the music industry and stuff next time if, if you want to or whatever. But. Yeah, it's it's literally whatever whatever comes up happens and like, we definitely had a well spent hour, so it was nice yeah, talking. Really. Yeah, fucking have me on anytime, buddy. I'll come on again. For sure. All right then, bud. Okay, I'll see ya. Have a good one. You too. Later. Well, that <laughs> that was Rudy Pache, Pache. Um, I mean that went exactly the way I was expecting it to go. Exactly the. <laughs> the way i was expecting it to go me and rudy we go back we go way back like i think we were 12 years old when we met first met um in grade seven and uh we were in the same class we we, we were in the same well yeah we were in the same class the same homeroom class which was the same class for every single uh subject you were in and yeah i remember the first day the first day of school, we, um, you know, <laughs> we got partnered together. We got, we, we had to, we were sat next to each other and we had to do this, you know, you do this thing where you meet the person who's next to you or whatever. There's always, there's, there's always this thing that schools do where they try to introduce you to the other students surrounding you. And, um, so I was, you know, I was partnered with Rudy and we were both shy and awkward and, uh, I asked him, I was like, hey, hey, bro, uh, you know, like, what's your favorite color? What kind of base, what kind of sport do you like? Blah, blah, blah. And he was super, he was like way more shy than I, than I was. Anyway, I don't even remember how the friendship developed, but we became like best friends. Yeah. And if you look at all my older videos, it's literally mostly just me and him. Yeah. Uh, at like 12 years old making these I've been drinking beers so I'm a little bit buzzed right now but yeah it was just mostly me and him making videos and they were so much fun and I've had you know some of the best memories of my life 
was working with or you know hanging out with making videos with rudy and keegan keegan as well and a few other people maybe we'll have keegan on here next i don't know but anyway that's it for this episode of the dynamite gizmo podcast i hope you enjoyed it i hope to see you in the next one and uh please like comment subscribe smash that bell notification you know what it is (laughs) anyway see you later folks Bye bye